Okay, we got <laughs> our video game characters too sexy. Oh, by Ackman. <laughs> Do you like hot men? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Do you like attractive women with big hands? What's up, everybody? No, that's disgusting, dude. I would never. This is the sexy man here. And Hell yeah. I'm bringing you my top 10 list of video game characters that I jerk off to. Number 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let's see how uh, similar the lists are. And Ergot. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking layup, dude. Nine. Uncle Lombago. <laughs> Lately, there's been a lot of buzz surrounding the upcoming game Stellar Blade and its protagonist, Eve. Many gamers are celebrating her provocative design, the exotic outfit she wears. Oh yeah, I mean, I saw the whole controversy with uh with this game when the demo came out or whatever. Everyone was saying, "Oh, this is unrealistic, a body, blah blah blah. This is this is only contributing to the male fantasy of of, of the hot women in all this other bullshit." So yes, I am familiar with this controversy. Whereas, and as a red-blooded male, I can appreciate this as well. Now I played the demo; it was pretty fun, and I think Stellar Blade is shaping up to be a stellar game damn On dude inside, some folk claim this type of character design is harmful because it objectifies women and displays unrealistic body standards and proportions now oh really what about men <laughs> what about the unrealistic body standards of of like almost almost every video game that there is a male character in it <laughs> they are jacked out of their mind i don't think even like mr olympia's can compare to video game characters, dude. Not even like look at Tekken alone. Every one of them has negative body fat percentage. Now we could ignore the fact that Eve's design was based off of a real human being. And yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do because true. This is like the easiest layup, dude. Like the entire model of Stellar Blade is designed around an actual real person. I mean, I, I'd have to go back and revisit the, the game Bayonetta because when that game came out, I mean, it's kind of in the same vein, you know, action, uh, combat, hack and slash, uh, female protagonist. But the thing with uh, the Bayonetta was like, yeah, like Bayonetta's hot, but she is more unrealistic because it's like her, her just limbs and her torso are just so like long and lanky to contribute to like this like fantastical uh just looking character um i remember like learn like being in art class and like how you learn like how to draw a person in art class is to get like you start with like the basics uh this is back in high school so that i might butcher this <laughs> um when you're drawing a person i think a, an average person is about seven heads Tall. like you take a person's head like you draw an oval or an egg or whatever and then you just literally just stack uh, seven heads on top of each other and then that's the height and then you know there's like other ways to figure out like torso arm length leg length knees and whatever um and then if you want to make like a model type character then i think it was like either eight or nine heads or something like that and those were just like the rules of art or whatever um so are the basic found like fundamental rules of art uh objectifying women and just people in general? <laughs> Planning on the internet makes me feel better than ordering the salad. But on the real, there is something to say about body standards in media, sexualization in video games, and how it can affect us. It feels kind of dumb to say this, but there is an ongoing debate around how hot video game characters should be. If you make a character too sexy, then it's misogynistic. Oh. But if you don't make every female a supermodel with double D honkers, then your game's woke. How oh yeah, they're, it's so polarizing too, because there can never be like a happy medium. <laughs> there can never just be uh, just someone that's, uh, I don't know, like mildly attractive. <laughs> because some people will automatically put them in the complete uggo section, and then other people will be like, yeah, they're hot. There can never just be like one or the other side. 
how are you supposed to win well today that's what we're talking about sex appeal in video games when is it good when is it bad how do you tell the difference yeah let's find out why are games marketed like stellar blade why are video games now filled with soft porn heroines with ridiculously large breasts why well because most people that play video games and you could break this down even more so into each subcategory of video game. Uh, most people that play video games are guys. <laughs> That's you can't argue with the numbers. Most guys, like if you like if you take a circle, and I'm about to art it up. Uh, this boom, flashbang gone. Uh, what do you call it? Yellow. If you take, or actually, even better, is this a circle? Yeah. If you take, this is like a hundred percent. This is the entire video game audience. hundred percent. Um, you would think that out of everybody, like, what is it? Seven point something. Was it like 7.4, 7.5 billion people on the planet? Uh, like out of the 7.4 billion people on the planet, logically, you would think that the, the chart would look like this. There's 50% guys. And then 50% girl. Um, but this isn't actually like, this is not how it goes. Uh, okay. I would, if I were to just guess, I would say the pie is more like this. There's like 25% and then 75%. And I'm just shooting in the dark. This is what I think. Like if this is the entire world, I mean, obviously you could probably break this down and there would be like a bunch of differences between like each country and each like game genre type or whatever. Guys are just brought up on video games and girls are not brought up on video games. Yes, I do think that, you know, as time goes on, uh, video games are, uh, you know, getting past the whole male dominated space and like, like women are taking over like a little more chunk of the pie for like a, a more even like distribution or whatever. But I would still say. Uh, it's still major, like video games in general are still majorly dominated. It's a male space for video games. So if you're making a video game and you know, most of your audience is probably going to be dudes, uh, it would be a smart business move to make things in your game that dudes would like. And what is that? Well, that's hot girls. Because fellas like big titty bitches. Next article. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what the fuck? Well, write some real fucking news. He's right. Shakespeare can <laughs> say it better himself. I mean, that's that's about it. Yeah. For a long time, gaming was a male-dominated hobby. Yeah. So naturally, developers made games that appealed to men. This was much more apparent in the olden days, where publishers had to rely on the box art to grab your attention. Yeah. This certainly grabs my attention oh sh are these video games advanced dungeons and dragons oh my god i'm kind of in the way look at this the, the the girl sitting on top of the dragons the the fabio type dude uh la guerra absolu <laughs> like jacked dude over top of a woman uh this this the x-man <laughs> what the fuck and I remember this game all the time. I remember going in and like this was back in the blockbuster days and I would always go down like the Xbox section when this is back in like the day where like VHSs were like you could go in and rent uh, movies and video games. I always remember seeing this game, but I never picked it up and I don't know why. <laughs> that shit. Hey, how's that new pinball game coming along? You know, Microsoft needs it out for the Xbox by May. Well, boss, it's looking great. But to be honest, pinball on console is a hard sell. It's kind of boring. So how yeah. can we spice it up? Fuck it, like this? 
Throw some chicks with guns and bro, pure pinball, American pinball reborn. Oh my god, this is the funniest fucking shit. <laughs> Swords on it, American pinball reborn, rated E for everyone. This might come as a shock yeah. to some of you, so brace yourselves. Sex sells in every industry. I <gasps> oh my god. Don't believe it! The same rules that apply to Hollywood and movie stars apply to gaming. People like things that are attractive. They had goddesses stand around and look pretty for the midnight release. Bro, for Halo? Oh my god, this wasn't it. My fucking, uh, what was it, EB Games or GameStop at the time? Yeah, it was just a long-ass line of, uh, big, hairy, sweaty dudes waiting for Halo 3 to drop. There was no, uh, like, this was not, like, no, this was not at my EB Games. It's a Halo 3. Blizzard paid Megan Fox to promote Diablo 4, and that was the best thing that came out of Diablo 4. True. The developers of a game called Sin Episodes Emergence hired a porn star to cosplay as one of their characters. <laughs> nice. 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 Sex appeal is an easy way to get the attention of men, but that's nothing new to video games. Yeah. It wasn't new when Laura Croft debuted with her pyramid breasts. And <laughs> Sharp watch. And it's not new with Eve and her ridiculous ponytail but what has changed is the industry it's much more complex and diverse now there are more female gamers than ever before so oh uh, wait what was that did he just drop what has changed is the industry it's much more complex and diverse now there are more female gamers than wait according to forbes in 2020 women accounted for nearly 41 percent of all games in the u.s holy shit i was wrong Meanwhile, in Asia, where 48% of the world's total gaming revenue takes place, women now make up 44 to 45% of the gaming population, according to Google and Nyko Partners. Oh, well, shit. Okay. Yeah, this still doesn't change anything, though. Like, even if it is 50-50, or close to it, <laughs> one product does not have to appeal to everybody. You can have specific products. I still don't get it. I mean, but understandably, if you are a business and you're trying to make money, wouldn't it make sense for you to try to cast the widest net and try to bring in the most amount of people instead of, I don't know, only target like half of the video gaming audience? I mean, I don't know. ...than ever before. So how do we sell games to them? Uh, maybe we could push out more dishwashing and cooking simulators? <laughs> Perhaps we could sexualize women less, portray them in a more realistic, less idealized way. No. No. No, man. <laughs> Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. But I think a better... Bro, I think... I, it, <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna touch on this, but like... Bro, graphics are way, way better nowadays than back in the day <laughs> by miles like the Laura Croft pyramid boobs are like nothing compared to you know modern day video games like Stellar Blade you know Unreal Engine 5.3 5.4 and when, that, when Unreal Engine fucking 6.0 comes out it'll still be a, a massive jump in terms of uh, graphic quality so I do think that also does play, have like a part to play. The solution is to sexualize men more. Picture this. True. Case Attorney 7 drops and the second case takes place on a beach. This is nothing more than an excuse for BAM! Shirtless Miles Edgeworth. Watch the fangirls go True. crazy. Instant 1 million copies sold within 24 hours. Capcom, you can send me the royalty checks. But seriously, if there is a major issue around objectifying women in video games, yeah, like, would you guys say that uh, God of War or Devil May Cry are the the opposite of this game in that they, like, God of War, like, Kratos is, like, a good-looking, like, fucking jacked dude. Uh, same thing in Devil May Cry. Like, all the main characters are just, like, good-looking dudes. So... If good looking dudes are already, if they're like, there are already games with good looking dudes that are just like hack and slashes, then what are 
I would be interested in seeing if the, like the game devs or, or whatever had numbers to, to figure out how many men and women bought those games just to see if uh, like this logic lines up. Okay, there's a like a really sexually objectified woman right here in Cellar Blade. People are upset because uh, the, like she's too hot. What about uh, you know Kratos and the DMC Bros? Those are all good-looking dudes. So there have already been games with with hot dudes in there. So, but but those games, you know, you don't hear a bunch of people. Uh, chirping up about all oh, sexually objectifying guys with uh, with uh, God of War and DMC and any other game where there's like a half naked dude in it. Games, I say go ahead and objectify men too. It's not like we can yeah. change the fact that sex sells and companies are going to use it to sell products. So why not level the playing field a bit? Hot, ripped, muscly men who, yeah. like me, uh, way to the <laughs> beach, appeal to women just as much as they do to gay guys. League of Legends yeah. has just as many sexy dudes as yeah. it does. Oh, who's that? Trendemir? I mean, just case in point. There's yeah. a tendency for websites such as Kotaku to post articles like Baldur's Gate 3 slyly adds jiggle physics for dicks balls. They will <laughs> Did they? Oh my god, I still haven't played BG3. Oh my god, that's so funny. We'll celebrate when men are sexualized, but not women. You ask me, that's a little sexist, Kotaku. Lost oh action. shit, Kotaku eating a dick. Depiction of female characters feels a decade out of place. If you're fine with people thirsting over those shirtless Leon Kennedy mods or the mods where Chris Redfield is just fucking naked for the entirety of Village, then you should also be fine with- But, okay, so yeah, he's like naked or whatever, but like, are, is he still like maximum auto flexing his triceps whenever he, you're like, like doing the behind the, the, the third person? Is he still flexing his triceps as hard as humanly possible? With people thirsting over Lady Dimitrescu. Now to clarify, there is a big difference between what a developer makes and what their audience makes of it. Just yeah. ask Jeff Kaplan. But if we oh yeah, this is a uh, another thing. Uh, there's like this concept called like death of the artist, and this happens when an artist makes a thing, distributes it to the world. So like when the artist is making the thing, they have like a uh, like a thought process and intent that they want you to feel when they make a piece of art. So then they make the piece of art or whatever, and they distribute it out into the world, the public. And you can't really control what people feel when they see like an art piece or listen to like a piece of music. Like you kind of can with music. Like, Oh, that sounds sad. That sounds like awesome rocking, whatever exciting. Um, but for the most part, you can't really control what people, people will feel whatever they want to feel. And that just, that's just a concept that, uh, you know, called death of the artist. If we held developers responsible for the actions and words of their community, well, the Call of Duty devs would be on trial for crimes against humanity. So this mm. doesn't apply to like multiplayer voice chat stuff. But what, if anything, is wrong with Stellar Blade in particular? Well, let's check out some articles and see if we can find the answer. IGN France posted a review of the demo saying mostly positive things about it. However, there was one paragraph people really took issue with. The design of the game, particularly its characters, highlights an obvious bias, and the result is not really a success. It's not new and other games have chosen to highlight the strengths of their female characters. But where a Bayonetta stands out with an iconic character design or a 2B inspires an entire generation of cosplayers, Eve from Stellar Blade is just bland. Bro, I cannot wait for the... What, what was this? E, I cannot wait for the Eve cosplays. That's going to be my favorite part when this game drops. A doll sexualized by someone you would think has never seen a woman. Oh my god. RDR <laughs> There's a lot of problems with this. First off, Eve isn't even sexualized within the context of the game or the events of the demo. Like, she doesn't flirt with anyone. She's not pushing her tits together, leaning over, asking yeah. for a ride. She never says like, Ugh, who wants to have sex with me? It's not even a factor at all. Like, bro, if you want to complain about hyper-sexualized characters, go play Soul Calibur, okay? Oh, yeah. Hop into the character creator. <laughs> 
And you can make your tits super huge. Also, the demo is like an... Oh, do they have a boob slider in Soul Calibur? Ah, uh, I forgot they did. <laughs> or long, with about 15 minutes of cutscenes, that's not enough time to give like a detailed character assessment or review. So a lot of people are complaining about Stellar Blade at the moment based on assumptions, what they think the game is going to be like when it actually comes out. Comparing Eve to Bayonetta in 2B isn't fair at all because those are characters that have been around for a long time and- Well, what do you mean? Why can't I compare uh, Stellar Blade to uh, Nier, Nier Auto, I, I can never say the goddamn name right, Automata? And then Bayonetta, they're both hack and slashes with like a hot female protagonist. Why can't I compare them? Because they've been around for a while. So what? So wait, so do I have to wait for like a similar amount of time to go by before I can compare them? I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's fine. But like, this is like, let's not pretend this is like, let's not pretend that fucking Bayonetta and... and uh, what do you call it? Near are fucking apples, and uh, Stellar Blade is an orange. That's not the case. <laughs> this, these are a hundred percent, like, ha like hack and slashes, with a fucking hot female protagonist. They appear in games that are completed and have been released to the public. Let's try another article. Oh, though. well, developer of Stellar Blade. I mean, people are gonna say the same shit when the fucking game gets released. So. It fails to recognize the game's sexism. This was posted before the demo came out. So just based on the six minute showcase, there is something striking when you look. I mean, and to be fair, like all of the, all of these characters are sexualized. <laughs> they all have like a Bayonetta and, and Eve have like onesies that are fucking skin tight. All right, let's not like mess around and say like, oh, that's not sexualized. I, I, this is like a normal thing that I see every day. Like, like what? And then fucking, uh, what do you call it? 2B from near has like a dress that you can like just literally look up or whatever. Like, yes, they are sexualized. Look closely at the images of this aesthetically successful action game. The heroine is ultra sexy. In less than six minutes, we see her wearing out ultra. So where was this ultra sexy, not just sexy, ultra sexy. <laughs> the levels that people will fucking use to like get their fucking point across, dude. Oh my God. Ultra sexy. What about like mega sexy or giga sexy? <laughs> it's each more improbable than the last. The message is clear. The shorter, the more skin visible, the better. Now, I'm not sure what trailer you watched, but there's like maybe nine seconds of footage where Eve's thighs are partially exposed. And, but besides that, it's just her arms. Like, where is this explicit overt sexualization that I... Uh, well, dude, like... As we see her on. wearing outfits, each more improbable than the last. The message is clear. The shorter, the more skin visible, the better. Now, I'm not sure what trailer you watched, but there's like maybe nine seconds of footage where Bro. Eve's thighs are partial. Like, this is not a normal outfit I would see in everyday life. <laughs> like, by any means. Like, come on. You might see something like this at like the gym or something if they are that type of person. Like, what is this? Like a bathing suit? <laughs> But I am all for it. That's not my issue. <laughs> like, <laughs> exposed. And, but besides that, it's just her arms. Like, where is this explicit overt sexualization that I seem to be missing? Is every woman in tights supposed to be a sex object? However, we are talking. No, they're not. But to say that, like, the super skin tight uh, onesie with a bunch of, like, holes and like like there's no arms there's like barely any legs or whatever it isn't, isn't sexualized i mean i kind of think that's like disingenuous or whatever but i mean i don't know what do i know talking about a character responsible for getting rid of an enemy threat in a post-apocalyptic context i mean th this kind of falls in line of the same argument of like was it like the whole what was it like in final fantasy with the battle bikinis or whatever like uh if you look at like a male character they're like fully decked out and like full plate, uh, you know, they're covered head to toe 
with just like metal and armor and then you see like the same armor on like a female character and it's just like a a neat little battle bikini thing <laughs> it's like come on what are we doing <laughs> of course it's like a little bit sexualized <laughs> So the old, her outfit isn't practical or realistic argument sometimes has merit, but I don't think it does with Stellar Blade or Bayonetta. Neither game is going for a realistic setting. Like yeah. if Call of Duty had established itself as a grounded military shooter and then got rid of military factions and threw Nicki True. Minaj in as a playable character. Oh, let's not pretend like Nicki Minaj is the, the crux of this. It's also uh, Snoop Dogg, uh, Kevin Durant, uh, and like literally everybody else. Well, that would be pretty fucking cringe, wouldn't it? Bayonetta is a witch and Eve is an ODST that stole Tracer's spandex. As long as they don't look stupid and they fit within the universe, I don't see either as a problem. Like yeah, neither so do I. I don't see either of these as being like an issue at all. So close to the body that it feels like a second skin. This guy has more problems with the tights industry than he does with the game. Yeah, that's what like if if the, the creators of a game want to put their character in tights, who gives a shit, dude? Like for real. But leggings are she has a nice bod and plenty of outfits to customize gamers like customizing and playing dress up. Bayonetta is arguably more sexualized, but she's considered a paragon of female representation and strong female characters. So again, what is the actual problem? The character is simply too sexy, act man. That's the issue. It's difficult not to see a sexualization of women, a practice which tended to disappear in the latest video game productions. Did you forget what won game of the year in 2023? Oh yeah, BG3. 100% dude. What I like the most is that every companion is so extremely fuckable. I want to fuck all of them. <laughs> I do not only want to fuck all of them, I want to... I want to be with them forever for the rest of my life. However, this choice is 100% assumed by the developer with arguments that are beyond belief. The director of Stellar Blade attempted to justify the project's irredeemably sexy argument. In terms of design... Irredeemably sexy argument? What? We focused on the back of the character because players are always facing her when playing. That's what they see the most, so it's very important. We didn't know that a character's charisma is first measured by the perfection of their posterior. Jesus Christ, man, go touch grass. When I play what? a game, I want to see someone who is prettier than me. I don't want to see someone normal. I want to see an ideal. I think it's important for entertainment, and after all, it is entertainment aimed at an adult audience. Which I mean, is heresy. that whole little spiel, that's entirely subjective. Like, how people consume entertainment is 100% subjective to each person. Some people want like to watch like realistic depictions of things other people want to see fantastical things like lord of the rings or or halo or whatever this is entirely subjective these are the unbelievable arguments i wanted my video game protagonist to look good how could you say something so brave yet so controversial like this is sexist now well shit i don't want to be sexist and play this so from now on, I'm only playing games with ugly protagonists. Like they just made a hot protagonist and gave her a bunch of outfits. That's yeah. It. And for some, that's the issue. The unrealistic body standards that are detrimental to women who consume this sort of media. And we'll get into that later on. But I Bro, and it's not just guys that like hot women. <laughs> Girls also like playing as hot chicks too. <laughs> this isn't exclusively uh like a, it's a guys leading the issue type of deal or it's a guy issue thing there are a hundred percent girls out there that like playing as hot girls i want to look at some good and bad examples of sex appeal in video games you see it's not whether you sexualize characters in a video game it's how you do it games yeah. like Baldur's gate 3 cyberpunk dragon age origins kotor and mass effect offer a diverse cast of male and female companions to simp for. Mm -hmm. And they all feel like real people. Yeah. Their personality is not solely defined by how sexy they are. You can fuck bears in Baldur's Gate 3 and you can <laughs> fuck aliens in Mass Effect. There's also options for same-sex romance. And you don't see too many people complaining about that. Mm -hmm. If you're gay or a little bit curious or just want to see how those romances can play out, those options exist. They yeah. add diversity to a game, an RPG, in a very good way. You know, this old reliable clip is actually relevant to the discussion for once. I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games. Oh. Because this is what it does. It appeals to, like the male fantasy. Well, we so Wait. 
Yes, all video games appeal to male, the male fantasy. This isn't the right video. Yeah, hold on, I gotta switch to... You know what? Fuck it, keep it rolling. Yes, this is my male fantasy. Hell yeah. But Red Dead That's a hard working man right there. It's the perfect game to illustrate the power of diversity and perhaps sex appeal because RDR2 appeals to the male and female gaze. Just as you can customize the outfits for Eve, you can do the same with Arthur. Mm -hmm. There are compilations of women thirsting over Arthur. And all I got to say is back off, ladies. He's mine. And then I also <laughs> just weirdly really liked the oh, my God. Really? I'm so jealous of her. <laughs> I'm so jealous. A wonderful, one of our wonderful assistant directors, Gethin Aldis, he says, Raj, we got to do those horse lines again. I was like, why? And he said, well, it's a little too intimate. You know, it sounds like you're not talking to a horse. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and he played it back and I was like, you're all right, girl. <laughs> And if I can thirst over Sadie Adler like a parched baboon. <laughs> then hell yeah. I hope women who play RDR2 can simp for Arthur Morgan. Again, yeah. it comes down to both of these characters feeling like real complex people that you can just inherently find attractive. It's called personality. There's no mystery behind good writing. It boils down to the developer's intentions and goals with their characters and their game. Yeah. If you want to make a graphic visual novel kind of game, probably don't call it Sex with Hitler. That might be a good start. <laughs> and there are a group of I didn't even know that game fucking existed, dude. What I would consider bad examples of sexualization in video games. Isabella from Dragon Age 2 is just... I never played Dragon Age 2. Um... Yeah, I played one. I played Origins. I skipped two because I saw the reviews were just dog shit bad. But then Inquisition came out and then I was like, oh, the game's good again. Yay. So I played one Origins and three. I did not play two. But uh, but yeah, this is like a lazy way to do like se sexualization right here. The smelly pirate hooker. Like, that's mostly her character. Now, I'm biased because I'd rather eat goat diarrhea than play Dragon Age 2. Yeah. But even then, Isabella still has more going on. She's mostly a smelly pirate hooker, but my issues with her character have more to do with the romance system. It isn't just mm. writing. Bad sexualization can be tied to the game mechanics. You want to romance this character? J just hit the icon with the heart on it. You'll be contracting gonorrhea in no time. <laughs> I don't mind the dialogue wheel on Mass Effect, but when it comes to gaining approval or influence with characters and romancing them in an RPG, I much prefer titles like KOTOR and Dragon Age Origins because you have to figure out and pick the dialogue option that a character will respond to. Yeah. You actually have to fl flirt and riz them up. You know, man <laughs> Old games you had to flirt. Nowadays... They just give you the option, dude. It's like, oh, there's a heart one. Okay, let's go. And and a lot of these games aren't even truly in the modern time because uh, in a real video game, uh, the option to, uh, I don't know, sleep with them wouldn't even be on the table unless there was like a microtransaction to where it's like you have to, un like you buy the microtransaction and then the option opens up. All right, so that's it. Like, none of these games are even, like, real. Maybe there was a Time Splitter's Future Perfect joke that went a little too far. You go first. Okay. But the over-sexualization in that game is part parody and part fan service. Personally, I have always found Ivy Valentine's design to be hilarious and over the top. Yeah. And that has been a topic of debate for a long time. But her design is also iconic. She has earned a place in gaming culture. Some yeah, I mean, if I don't know if <laughs> the like, uh, what do you call it, Ivy? If like whatever the next version of Soul Calibur comes out and Ivy's a character, I don't know if Ivy could withstand the same amount of like criticism that the games do today, and you know, like Stellar Blade and all these other games. Some female characters are defined by their sex appeal, while others ride the line in between. Samus is hot. Yeah. But she's also like a real person, kind of. Dead no, none of these things are real. None of these characters are real. That's the thing. 
all of this is fake. This is just ones and zeros on a screen. <laughs> That's what's funny. For a live extreme volleyball takes sex appeal to an extreme level, and it's mostly a gimmick, but at the same time, the game was an impressive display of physics. On the other hand, you've got something like the new Fable trailer, which a lot of people reacted negatively to. Oh they boy. They blasted the design of this female character, and, well, she does look pretty silly. I think people uh, would have reacted yeah. a lot better to this trailer if they had taken the angle of, our protagonist is the antithesis of your typical hero, and she's thrust into the role of being a hero. But the trailer doesn't try to tell you that story. Mm. This character is just kind of ugly for no real reason. Like in Beautiful Joe, you play as a comic book movie nerd who gets sucked into the movie and has to become a hero, even though he's a fucking nerd. He's the antithesis. That could have worked for Fable, but they don't really tell that story in the trailer. So it comes across like it's made to appeal to the body positivity crowd. Uh. And a lot of gamers just don't care for that. I don't think we... I think... I mean, from what I got, I've gathered so far, if the attraction level, like either the hotness or the ugliness is like the main selling point of their personality, then the character is just a bad character. Like there's no good or bad reason. If, if the developer cannot create like a good environment for their character to uh, thrive in, then it's just a wash. We've seen really, really bad examples of sexualization in video games in a long time. Custer's Revenge is one of those notoriously awful fuck? games, which they hit the double whammy. They were racist and sexist, and they yeah. hit the game that way deliberately to generate outrage and publicity. Really? Some tactics never go out of style. <laughs> Duke Nukem Forever is also an awful example because the oh, game yeah. was terrible, wasn't worth the wait, and a lot of the jokes just weren't funny. Power armor is for pussies. Um, well. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Trying to take shots at Halo. <laughs> okay. So it felt outdated. Recent worst example of sexualization, of course, goes to Ride to Hell Retribution. You kill a group of dudes and then immediately start banging a chick with all your clothes on. Women are quite literally an objective in Ride to Hell. Man, that fucking game. But going back to the real issue, Never played. body positivity unrealistic body standards in video games and by extension all media multiple studies have shown that both women and men feel lower levels of self-esteem when consuming media where characters have that ideal body Dang. now you don't really need a study to tell you this because if you're a dude and you've ever watched 300 and thought damn i'm a fat ass well bro when i saw 300 i was like the most fucking enthused to like get a gym membership and just start hitting the gym crazy i was like damn i don't know maybe i'm like an outlier or maybe my mind is just just i don't know it, it makes like different connections or whatever um bro when i got done with 300 it was like during the night and it was probably like 10 or whatever uh geez i was bro i was on i was running on like diesel nos i was running on jet fuel the next day i was like that's this is fucking awesome. I'm going to hit, I'm going to, I don't remember if I had a gym membership or if I got a gym membership that day, or if I just had like simple like weights in my porch in my backyard. And I just like did like some calisthenic shit. But I, I distinctly remember the day after I saw it, I did like some workout and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> well, then you're just like me, but you also probably don't think about what Gerard Butler went through to look that good in the same way you probably well i mean he's talked about it i mean it's a lot of fucking working out and hard work it stands to reason if you have a game that is based in like a hack and slash and your character is doing a bunch of jumps flips back flips swinging a big ass sword and whatever like the character would it would stand to reason that the character has to at least look like athletic in some way probably don't think about how much time game developers spend on creating attractive characters how much concept art and designs they have to create but the problem with feeling insecure about your body image is an issue that nobody can fix but you yeah feeling like your body type is being represented in media is a surface level solution that ignores the real issue i think a lot of people who write these articles essentially complaining that characters are too sexy i think that comes from a place of insecurity or just a grift 
Every woman on the planet mm, has struggled with her self-image. And to all the ladies watching this right now, you look great without makeup. And every man has struggled with his own physique and confidence. It's pretty funny. There was this tweet. Microsoft urges developers. But yeah, guys, keep going to the gym, though. Developers not to create female characters with exaggerated body proportions. And I replied, yes, of course. We wouldn't want any exaggerated body proportions. <laughs> if, of the male characters, it might make us feel insecure with like uh, Gears, <laughs> fucking Marcus. Uh, yeah. Like, just the limbs alone from all the characters and gears were just like big, chunky, meaty. They were just big, hairy men. Big, hairy, strong men, dude. <laughs> On male characters, it might make us men feel insecure. And if you look at the replies, well, first off, <laughs> this is the guy who was the art director. Oh my god. <laughs> that. <laughs> Crazy! <laughs> oh my god, dude's a gym, a gym dude. <laughs> Let's just make all the guys fucking jacked out of their mind. Uh, why? Well, I, I mean, I, you know, I just go to the gym. I see a lot of people in the gym. They look good, so I think uh, you don't know, you're showing this uh, like these bodies to the world would be a, uh, you know, it would be like a cool little interesting thing. That's all. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> this guy's arms are fucking bigger than my head, dude for Gears of War. Also, I recently reviewed the first Gears of War. You shouldn't watch that video at all. That's how reverse psychology works, right? I, I will 100% not do that. <laughs> okay, sweet. But a lot of people in the replies were like, I aspire to be Marcus Phoenix. Yeah. I live seven days a week trying to look like Marcus Phoenix. I must go yeah. to the gym more. I'm feeling a yeah. strange and sudden urge to hit the gym. The men in Gears Yeah. Uh, I got this. I, I don't know. Okay, so I'm not like a unique snowflake like I thought I was like, I don't know whenever a guy sees like another jacked dude and like, I don't know, like a story, a movie, a game. It just it few it's like extra motivation for the day of like, oh, I got to hit the gym. Uh, this shit's fucking hard. I got to get all my meals in and eat, drink water and all this other bullshit. I don't know. I mean, it, it could be because men and women are, women are just are just different <laughs> or whatever. But uh, yeah, like uh, one reason I started going to the gym is because I wanted to fucking look like fucking the Dragon Ball Z characters. I want to look like Goku when he's turned like Super Saiyan. Who didn't fucking uh, what do you call it? Like yell in their room by themselves trying to turn into a Super Saiyan. If you didn't do that, then you weren't living. Years of war aren't realistic. But the women are. Dude, her tits are way too big. That is clearly like a C cup or bigger. Looks right. like it was made by like a horny 15 year old. And we're trying to be a little bit more mature than that. <laughs> and this goes back to the, <laughs> do they have realistic outfits or not? And I think Cliff is right. If this lady had huge knockers, it would just kind of distract from the war, you know? But seeing <laughs> ideal beauty or attractiveness in media or video games, if it makes you feel insecure, you should use those feelings of insecurity to better yourself. Yeah. Go on a walk, eat healthier food. Ideally, that's what people would do, but that's not always the case. Yeah. If you're trying to condemn or criticize a piece of media because the characters Wait. are- let me go back. I didn't, I gotta see the, the FPS for this. Healthier food. Ideally, that's what people would do, but that's not always the case. If you're trying to condemn- mm. Go on a walk. Let me see. Eat Let me see one more time. Food. Ideally, that's what people would do, but that's not always the case. If you're trying to, oh, it's not bad. I mean, eh. like the visual clutter ain't bad. It's not terrible. I need to see more though. Condemn or criticize a piece of media because the characters are sexy and that made a reticle looking a little chunky though. You feel bad about yourself. And that sounds like a you problem. I hope you work on that. Lord, grant me the strength to accept the things I cannot change. Yeah. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. None of us can change that sex sells. It's a marketing tool. You can't get rid of it in media yeah. or business. So the best thing to do is become the best version of yourself. In my experience, actual sexism in video games happens in voice chat or mostly at the studios. Uh, yeah, <laughs> with uh, the whole Activism Blizzard thing. Uh, and what's funny is that this is, this is only really an issue when it comes to things that we can see. 
So movies, video games, shows, things that we can see with your like eyes, but like no one ever has an issue when a character is like sexualized in a book or anything like that, because, because for whatever reason, people can just imagine whatever they want. And uh, yeah. So where's the chirping up for the hypersexualization of, uh, of, you know, women or men in books. All right. No one's complaining about that ever. People just leave books alone. Books are their own thing. They're just words. But oh, when it comes to a picture, I don't have to think as much. I don't have to use my imagination as much. Oh, it's right in front of my face. It's like the lowest common denominator that people have to bitch bone complain about. And I think focusing too much on whether this character is too hot or not distracts from the conversations people should be having about how women are treated in the workplace and in the game industry. What's really obnoxious is when people try to Photoshop official character art to be more or less sexy to <laughs> prove some kind of point. Is it just me or is this shit kind of weird? Like, hey, the marketing <laughs> for GTA 5 would have been much- Oh my god, video games and body image. Bikini girl in GTA. Yeah. <laughs> better if the chick with the cell phone was fatter what why did you do this to cortana what? What? she's a fucking man-made ai she's not a real person yeah are some of the well none of these characters are really real these body types really that unrealistic we live in a world of plastic surgery for god's sake yeah then there was horizon forbidden west where there was like a couple shots in one of the trailers where aloy looked a little chubby and some people started freaking out about it and they were like well what what would she look like if she slathered a bunch of makeup on her face i just think <laughs> obsessing over this kind of stuff isn't healthy if you're no. going to obsess over it then do so in the gym it's important to know yeah that just just go to the gym please but no, people will never go to the, will never just solve their problems by just going to the gym. They will do, they will spend way more money in their entire life for other things to make them look a certain way besides go to the gym. In all honesty, that is 100% what most people do. Not everybody, because you know, you still see people in the gym putting in work and all that shit. Um... But yeah, I would say people are more likely to subscribe to like certain diets or certain supplements or do some surgery bullshit or whatever when you could just go to the gym and get multiple health benefits from doing a little one hour workout. But the problem with this whole debacle is not about Eve's design. The problem is quite simple. A game developer and thousands of internet users are bluntly describing Eve as an ideal woman. The only woman that men want to see. Also I mean, a, a lot of other, like, uh, I can say the same thing about like any other Jack dude in any other video game. That's like the ideal guy. But, you know, they're fucking tall, dark, handsome, jacked out of their mind, fucking almost 0% body fat, so on and so forth. So labeling Eve as the only kind of woman men want to see is wrong on so many levels. Dudes will thirst over anything with a pair of tits. Yeah. Despite having specific outlets for this content, it now needs to be injected into all media. I feel like you could have done more with that little bit. Like, aren't there like a shitload of like fruits or not fruits, but like foods that like uh, vaguely resemble like private parts and like uh, boobs and vaginas? <laughs> to cater solely to them. How is this any different from putting realistic body standards in video games to cater to a different crowd? It's not. What? Company make product because want money? Yeah. Love is challenging narrow beauty stereotypes within the games industry with a new campaign that promotes avatars that look like real women. Again, you have to remember- Oh, wait, Dove? Oh. Remember that these companies are fucking massive and they're making these decisions because they think it's going to increase revenue. You've got Stellar Blade, which is like, hey, let's lean a little bit into sex appeal to sell the game. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, let's portray women in a normal way to sell the product. And both of these things are fine, but you can't pretend you're better than the opposite side if yeah. your end goal is the same. Money. Oh uh, yeah, that's a really good point right there. People are only gonna care about what Stellar Blade represents in their ongoing culture war. But at the end of the day, what matters most to folk like me is if the game is awesome or bad. Is Eve going to be a flat, lifeless husk? Or an interesting character who just so happens to be a baddie with a Yeah, like, 
it's not going to look so good for this entire argument if the game is just bad. <laughs> I mean, but judging off the demo, the game seemed like pretty good and like all the, the combat mechanics seemed pretty good. So, uh, oh my God, here's, here's hoping. <laughs> yeah, that won't quit. In conclusion, Rule 34 has been around for about 20 years. People are going to sexualize your game and your characters even if you don't. Sex appeal in gaming isn't inherently a problem, but there are pretty clear ways of doing it right and yeah. doing it wrong. Instead of wasting our energy discussing things that will never change, maybe we should focus on the design and fun factor of the game if it's visually appealing or God forbid how women are treated in the actual workplace in the game industry. Oh, yeah. The recent controversy around Eve and Stellar Blade isn't a new phenomenon. I think it's ridiculous to criticize it for shallow reasons like the character is too hot. It made me feel bad. And it's equally absurd what? to criticize a protagonist that isn't hot enough. Is the design good or not? Does the character have a reason to look like this? Sure, there are some instances. I mean, I don't know if your character is jumping around doing backflips and swinging swords and shit and doing athletic shit, it would stand to reason that your character is just going to look athletic just in general. But like, as far as like people's faces go and shit like that, it's like, there's no real good or bad. Like what would be a good or bad reason to why someone's face would look good or bad? You know, you're just, you just spawn in with a fucking face. If it's, if it's attractive looking, great. If not, uh, you rolled a, a fucking crit one. It sucks. This is of objectification and bad sexualization in video games. Like a face's attractiveness doesn't really have any like utility in a video game. I've never seen that be like, like have it be like a function in a game because it's just not important. But in my experience, these are pretty rare. Unrealistic characters can affect the average Joe or Jill's self-esteem. But at the end of the day, you have to learn how to be happy with your own image. Nobody yeah. can do that for you. Your self-esteem is not the responsibility of some multi-billion dollar corporation. Sex sells and you can't fight that truth any more than you can fight gravity. That's yeah. the way it is. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Let me know who you think the sexiest video game character is in the comments below. Ah, uh, you probably showed him in like the, the, the video already. Right, everyone. That's all I got for today. This is the sexy man signing out. Hell yeah. Hey. The sexiest character is right there in the center. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's another banger from Ackman. I love watching his videos, dude. Um. I mean, I hope the game comes out and it's good. I mean, I'll get it. I'll try it out and whatnot, but uh, like Jesus, why are we like criticizing like why a character looks a certain way? Can't we just go back to the days of like criticizing a game's like core gameplay loop or some shit like that? Or, like the core game systems in a game, trying to figure out whether those are good or bad. Oh, we got to focus on like the, the way the character looks, <laughs> but I mean, it's whatever. Another banger from Ackman. I can't wait to see another one. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right. Later.